one hour and five minutes of, well, just an incredible uh, evening's rally in Tampa, Florida. This president uh, is focused like a laser on the candidates he wants to win. I was getting a kick out of uh, keeping one eye on uh, other networks as uh, we were watching the president speak uh, to the good people of Florida. Uh, and they were talking about Trump is campaigning because he's afraid of losing the House. Now, apparently, no one noticed over at that other network, Judge Janine, that that the president was boosting a gubernatorial candidate and a senatorial candidate, <laughs> uh, not a House candidate. Judge Janine Pirro joins me now. She's the host of Justice with Judge Janine on the Fox News Channel, 9 o'clock Eastern Time on the uh, Fox News Channel. Author of, we are pleased to tell you, Allow me to announce it here tonight. The New York Times bestselling novel, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. And Judge Janine is holding up her no, index not. finger no, not. for number one on the New York Times bestselling list. It must have killed them to have to put a conservative book up there. It must have killed them. Well, and all the more uh, reason we were pulling for you all Thank along. You. And that's, uh, it, it's great to have you here. Speaking of winners and winning... This president, my gosh, he could not have sounded more uh, assured of what is going to happen on November 6th, encouraging the base to get out and vote, the audience loving it. I have never seen a rally in which the, there was not a delirium in the room yep. uh, and the cheers for the issues and for the, for the people that he uh, chose to mention and to highlight and give a shout out to. Uh, extraordinary. Great, a great evening. Uh, well, I think an absolutely great evening. And what I love about Donald Trump is he gets you so psyched up that by the end of the speech, you're like, what do we do now? You know, it's not like I'm going to put my pajamas on. I'm going to bed tonight. No, we got to cheer. And you are so astute when you say it has nothing to do with the House. First of all, Ron DeSantis is a great guy. He gave a great speech, you know, and I'm going to miss him because I believe that he's going to win. He's right. going to be the governor of Florida. We're going to miss him in Congress. He was one of the guys who fought tooth and nail to to get to the bottom of what was going on in the FBI and the DOJ. But He's still uh, fighting. And he still is still fighting. fighting. And as, as we look at that evening, uh, that rally, and we're going to see a lot of these rallies, folks, across the country. The president says he's going to be doing it if necessary seven days a week when we get two months out from November 6th. And this is a president who thrives on it. For a lot of people, this would be... For a lot of presidents, it would be drudgery, it would be an imposition, uh, it would be uh, innervating uh, to have to go around the country and to cheer on candidates and to build the, the Trump uh, majority in, in Congress. This man loves it. He lives on, in the moment, and he has a, a, a crowd that boosts his spirits. It's a, it's yes. a virtuous cycle. Yes. Uh, this relationship. And, you know, you're so right. The energy goes back and forth. And right. by the way, you know, the man, I talk about this in the book, the man. Which book was that? That, that book you were just mentioning. Some liars and, <laughs> liars and liars. liberals. The, like Donald Trump is a force of nature. I have never seen anyone like him. This He can size people up in a second. He can go into a den of lions, come out with a suit and tie straight and a lion's head to put on the library wall. I mean, he has more energy than anyone. He McConnell doesn't need to. And Ryan this should be very nervous after hearing your, your metaphor, well, uh, because I think they're, they're headed for a wall of some kind. They apparently don't like his wall, so maybe the wall you just suggested. Was well, well, wait a minute. You, you know that in the omnibus bill that Ryan and McConnell put together, there's $1.6 billion for the wall, right? No, but in the no, small no. print, it's not for the wall. It's for border security. That was a trick statement. That was. You I want to see if you, you were going to fall gonna, for it. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, not well. this time. You'll get me the next time. <laughs> they, but, they, but they are rhinos. They are Republicans in name only. They don't support the president. And I talk about it. In in the book, how they have done everything they can from this embarrassing book, him with Obamacare. Book, behind, how many minutes again, have we liars, been on? Liars, leakers, and liberals. <laughs> the case against the anti-Trump conspiracy. Congratulations, yeah. number one. Well, you know what? I think what's more significant, though, is that the American people are winning. You listen to this president. You listen to what he's done for us, and it's absolutely stunning. He has been the most incredible president we have had in in memory for me, and I think he's going to go long be past some of our favorites in history. In my memory, 
is even longer than yours. Mm. Uh, because I'm much older than you, oh. I am proud to say. Uh, Judge, this, this president is historic already. What he's accomplished, what he has done, hasn't been done since the era of FDR. And for, for the left not to acknowledge it, for the left-wing national media not to uh, uh, accept it and acknowledge it, uh, is uh, uh, terrible. You, today, Jamie Dimon, yeah. the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, actually giving the president credit for accelerating economic growth, as he put it, uh, through uh, the tax cuts, uh, through deregulation. I, and then I got a kick out of him. He even did what, the, you know, and, and Jamie Dimon for a while was sort of copying President Trump and what he was talking about, because I think uh, Jamie Dimon was thinking of running uh -huh. for president at one point. I think he's been cured of that. But he said, just as, the, as President Trump had, uh, you know, the Fed is, is a worrisome thing. Uh, his reasons for being worried about the Fed were quite different. He was worried about, not to get too far into the weeds, the unwinding of uh, quantitative easing. Uh, the president worried straightforwardly about rising interest rates, uh, slowing down the economy. So it, it's the, the country is waking up and starting to acknowledge, yes, there is a man amongst us who is smart as hell, who's tough as hell, and he is delivering on all of his campaign promises. And guess what? We've got prosperity, rising markets, new wages, a growing middle class where we had a shrinking middle class. Yep. And as he said, the world is respecting America again. Well, you know, I remember, and think about two years ago, you know, with all the things that were happening in the country, people, you know, you wondered if someone was going to be coming down the street with a butcher knife yelling, Allahu Akbar, okay, and now we don't even think about it anymore because he destroyed the ISIS caliphate in the Middle East. He allowed the military generals to do what they do best. He didn't pull back. You know, the guy is a winner. He's a fighter. He's nonstop. He never sleeps. The man never sleeps. He doesn't. And may I add, a great American. A great American. Who Judge makes Jeanine, us all proud. Absolutely. You make us proud. You are a great American. You are number one. <laughs> number one. Liars, leakers, and liberals on the New York Times bestseller list. Congratulations. Congratulations. An awesome achievement. Thank you. And a terrific book. We recommend it to you highly. Be sure to watch. I'm, she has been just vlogging everything she does. <laughs> Justice with Judge Janine. Saturdays, 9 p.m. on the Fox News channel. Thank we you. also recommend that hour to you highly as well. Coming up next, Facebook shutting down 32 fake pages and accounts. They can't, they can't yet say it's Russian. But, oh, there are some Democrats who figured out it's Russian right away. Where the heck were our agencies, our spy agencies, our intelligence agencies? How could this just happen? What's going on with those very smart intelligence agencies? All involved, apparently, in an effort to influence the midterm elections. The radical gins, well, they've got it all figured out as usual. We'll take that up and more. Former FBI Assistant Director James Kallstrom joins me here next. We'll take up the deep state as well. Stay with us. Well, the president, uh, that rally in Tampa firing everybody up. And at the same time, the deep state, the radical dims are driving in every way they can to subvert this president's uh, administration, uh, this uh, Trump White House, the presidency of Donald J. Trump. Uh, meanwhile, the trial of the president's former campaign manager. He was that for a few months, five months, I believe, Paul Manafort. It's underway, got underway today. Manafort, the first person to be charged in the special counsel's investigation of collusion with Russia, it went before the jury today. The jury has selected the first witness, took the stand, Tad Devine. Democratic political consultant. He was the architect of Bernie Sanders' campaign. But guess what? He worked with Paul Manafort on campaigns in Ukraine. And he apparently has got a turned and sort of twisted view now of things. Manafort is uh, facing 18 counts of violating tax and banking laws related to activities that go back to 2004. Nothing whatsoever to do with so-called collusion with Russia. Facebook uncovered sophisticated efforts, it said, to influence American politics leading into the midterm elections this November 6th. Although the social media giant said it didn't know who was behind the effort, Senator Mark Warner, the ranking Democrat, the vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, says he knows who it was. He said this, today's disclosure is further evidence that the Kremlin 
continues to exploit platforms like Facebook to sow division and spread disinformation. Joining us tonight, James Kallstrom, former assistant director of the FBI. He served nearly 30 years with the Bureau, and it is great to have you with us. Great to see you. 27 years. Good years. Those are great years yeah. uh, for the country, too, yeah. because uh, your service, uh, it was a different time. The FBI, a different organization. Ronald Reagan. Yep. Uh, now, we have, now we have Donald Trump. You better believe it. Uh, and they are. They stand as pillars in the pantheon yeah. of presidents. Uh, and they have made such an impact, this president, already. It's, it's hard to believe he hasn't even been in office two years. And meanwhile, the deep state, the radical Dems, are going after him uh, like dogs. Uh, and in the Republican Party leadership, the, the rhinos, uh, uh, McConnell and Ryan, don't stand with him. And as a matter of fact, they provide support and uh, uh, substance uh, to the they are so the paid off and so weak and so yeah. I mean I, I if I had my sidearm I I I'd have to hold my hand down not to shoot the television out when I <laughs> when I see Ryan talking yeah, yeah it's, I mean and just the way he's absolutely had no support whatsoever for this president it, look at what he's done for the for our economy look what he's done for the middle class lower class all classes of people right I mean lowest employment rates across the board. And then we hear that struck now. We see his uh, some more of his communications. He struck the FBI. Yeah. Where he uh, wants to hold on to all his clearances and all his ability to, to, uh, Class to classify and unclassify so he can really, really churn up the whole conspiracy over there while he's working for Bob Mueller. Yeah. It, it's, uh, to, to have him near the special counsel uh, in any capacity is, is, is stunning to begin with. Uh, the fact that Mueller dismissed him. Uh, without even considering the reasons that he had done so, these texts that uh, he's looking at that, that, that basically scream uh, uh, subversion of a presidency and not one question from the special counsel of Peter Strzok. Of course, he never told anybody either. No, no, he forgot to mention <laughs> he that. He forgot to mention that. There's so yeah. much that the yeah. special counsel hasn't yeah. mentioned. You know, he takes a 14-year-old case that apparently they couldn't make a case 14 years ago. Right. You know. So what do they do? They send the, you know, they go in the middle of the night, serve search warrants for his family. I mean, ju just the way they've treated this guy is in solitary confinement by the judge in the D.C. circuit. I mean, just an outrage the way they've dealt with this. And they've carefully selected yeah. the juries and the yeah. venues uh, for their advantage. And understandably, that's what you would want to do, I, I guess, if you're a prosecutor or a defense right. uh, attorney. But to do so, so heavy handedly, so just obviously... Uh, biased and, and completely, completely outside the, the bounds of just fundamental common sense and decency and judgment. Our system of laws has to treat everybody the same. From the chairman of the bank to the guy, the drug dealer, everybody has to have the same disrespect. And w what they've done, in, uh, just the way they uh, search, searched uh, Donald Trump's lawyer, yeah. the way that was handled. Just yeah, You don't even hear anything. There's no. no there's no discussion now uh, amongst the professionals, uh, that is, the American Bar Association, the attorneys. They're all like uh, uh, you know, uh, hyenas attacking uh, uh, carcasses uh, instead of talking about elevating the standards, right. uh, the conduct of investigators to the standards that are required by law. And, of course, no discussion of grand juries. No. You know, the... Uh, the Intelligence Committee in the House did a great job. Nunes. He's the one shining light, really. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, but until we can actually see what's in those affidavits, you know, the original one and then the, then the continuations, you know, the, the, re How does this the regulations say, you, okay, you get the order and, and you're proclaim proclaiming that there's some kind of a offense, you know, some sort of a crime going on or some sort of counterintelligence investigation. Well, you have to show after the first period of time what, what's it, if it's 90 days or whatever, you have to show some sort of progress, you know, and you have to document that to the, to the judge to continue, you know, the great, uh, the, the fact you're intercepting somebody. You have to, so when we find out what's actually in these affidavits. Which we still don't know. You know, it's going to be a big day in, in a lot of people are right. going to feel the heat of the law. Well, they should, and because James it's an Colby outrage. Still sitting out there in the wings, waiting his turn. I, the, he comes out uh, still sanctimonious, still self-righteous, and still 
uh, so compromised and, and I think personally so corrupt. A total lack of common sense. I mean, the guy, uh, you know, he's an educated moron. I mean, he just absolutely, you know, and, and it, look what he did to the FBI. You know, no leadership, no discipline, no nothing. You get the last word here. Where does this end in your in your view right now? I don't know what's going to happen with the attorney general. And the deputy attorney general is, you know, he needs to be not the deputy attorney general. But somebody needs to impanel a grand jury. I mean, these are the most outrageous crimes conducted in the United States in, in my history. Yeah, much bigger than Watergate. I think we both agree. Much bigger than that. Jim Kallstrom, as always, great to see you, my friend. Thank you, Lou. Thanks so much. Coming up next, new details revealed about the Mueller witch hunt. What Judicial Watch dug up on the disgraced FBI agent Peter Strzok? We'll take that up with the group's director, Chris Farrell, joins us next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Judicial Watch has again uncovered new emails, this time from disgraced FBI agent Peter Strzok. Strzok insists that he retain his FBI security clearance before moving to special counsel Robert Mueller's team. Strzok is assured he will remain free to act just as he did while a deputy assistant director of the counterintelligence uh, division. Uh, joining us now, Chris Farrell. He's the director of investigations and research for Judicial Watch. And Chris, first of all, thanks for being here. Great to see you again. Great work. Uh, I don't even know what to say. The people who are named in this scandal in the FBI, who are patently, obviously, transparently corrupt, have the audacity to ask for... continuing security clearances, even as they are moved uh, to the special counsel. Uh, I, I mean, I don't understand this. The culture, the, the reasons that they understand they can get away with this nonsense. Well, they, had to, they had to advance the conspiracy. They're in the middle of a project trying to destroy President Trump. And so uh, Strzok needed to keep all of his horsepower because he was just moving the effort to a new venue. And you'll note that he's <clears throat> emphatic about keeping his ability or his authority to declassify information. That's specifically mentioned in the text of the emails right. we recovered. And the reason why he wants to declassify information is so he can leak it. Mm -hmm. This is all part of an information campaign. This is the, the Stop Trump gang. We have it in their text messages and their emails. The FBI bends over backwards, changes procedure and process, creates a new floating uh, deputy assistant director position so that Strzok can you know, keep his, his hands in, in, in the game and be able to have the same authority and power while he's detailed over to the special counsel's office. Um, this is abuse of power, abuse of procedure. It's criminal. And the, I think the emphasis on his authority to declassify information is quite telling, because if you want to look for leaks, and we already know that there's a problem with Comey and McCabe and Strzok and the manipulation of information, that's where you need to look. Well, we need to look. The problem is the special counsel is the one doing the looking. And no one has, apparently, the, uh, the energy or the, the, the uh, vision to carry out an investigation from Congress that will directly go after exactly what you're saying. Uh, it's a peculiar time. And we know that the, all of these documents, the FISA warrants, the scope memo, we still haven't seen. Jim Kallstrom and I were just talking about that yes. very... By the way, Jim Kallstrom says to say hello to you. Uh, <laughs> say hello back. <laughs> and, and hey back. Uh, I will pass that on, too. Uh, he, you know, there's a note here from, from Jim on criminal contempt, false statements, uh, the uh, lying in a, a, a court, uh, denying civil rights uh, yep. of, of, of Trump at all, acting under color of law and perjury. Yep. Those are just some of the, the, the notes that he has taken on what is going on here. And yet we don't have anyone in Congress, not even Devin Nunes, the chair of intelligence, who is, as uh, Jim pointed out has been this, the hero in this, uh, in Congress. Not even he has had the ability to go after these issues. Um, and, and I don't know how we get to them. I really don't anymore, because justice is a corrupt, uh, 
and I think uh, incompetent uh, institution, uh, and as we've discussed, the FBI is beyond repair. Well, I can tell you that, you know, Mueller has yet to be able to articulate the criminal predicate for his investigation. No one can tell you what crime Mr. Trump and his campaign purportedly committed. There's nothing there. So he, he can't tell you what the crime was. I can tell you what Strzok's been doing. 18 U.S.C. Section 242, which is deprivation of rights under color of law. It's essentially abuse of authority, abuse of process, exactly what Mr. Kallstrom was talking about a few moments ago. And so that kind of leveraging and using one's law enforcement power to try to steer an election, to target and go after a candidate for the presidency, is the most outrageous abuse of, of law right. enforcement and intelligence powers we've ever seen. And, and now it's compounded because this whole effort to go after Manafort, and I have no sympathy for Manafort, but the whole effort to go after him is to squeeze him so that he'll say something about this... Yeah meeting with a Russian attorney and Donald Jr. and the rest of the people. Yeah. And, you know, and let, let's be clear about that meeting. Well, wait vessel, a minute. The, the I, I'm vessel sorry. We can't, go, we can't go meeting by meeting, Chris. We're really in trouble, I, I, if you will. Uh, your point. No, I was going to say that the, the meeting with the Russian attorney, she met with Fusion GPS before the meeting and, and after. then after the right. meeting. Right. And in the intelligence world, that's called dispatch and recovery. She was a targeted asset of Fusion GPS and the Clinton campaign to try to generate a crisis. Fusion GPS has just been corralled by the Russian oligarch who has charged uh, them with other things, uh, including, uh, including defaming him uh, and his companies. I mean, this is going the other way, but it takes a Russian oligarch to actually use the court system to get to one of the obvious central actors, and, and that is, you know, is Fusion GPS. Mr. Mueller, if you're looking for conspiracy, go back to Fusion GPS and the, right. and the Hillary Clinton campaign. It's, it's amazing to me. Uh, and one last quick question, quick answer, if you would. We see now that, uh, that uh, Comey is going to, has been told to, to preserve his records. He's coming, he's going to be ordered back uh, to Congress. Is there... Is there anything to that? Is it a moment or is it just another uh, non-event? Uh, the, the more Comey talks, the better. Uh, you know, he's in a position now where he's contradicted himself right. repeatedly. Uh, so let's keep Jim Comey talking. The indictment will write itself. Chris Farrell, thank you for helping those, uh, those folks out with all that you do. And hopefully uh, those indictments will be written soon because it's going to have a lot more names than uh, uh, the former fired FBI Director James Comey. Chris Farrell, thanks so much. Thanks, Lou. Up next, President Trump rallying voters in Florida and, in point of fact, across the country as he touted the return of American strength and pride. Most importantly, America is being respected again. We're respected again. We'll have the thoughts of Dr. Sebastian Gorka and Sidney Powell, former federal prosecutor. When we return, stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, if you're wondering what I'm doing here at this time of night, uh, it's because President Trump was in Tampa earlier where he slammed the crazy liberal agenda of Dems and their idea of, well, getting illegal immigrants to vote. We believe that... Only American citizens should vote in American elections. Which is why the time has come for voter ID, like everything else. Voter ID. President Trump's uh, proposal coming on the heels of the city of San Francisco permitting illegal immigrants the right to vote in school board elections and uh, as President pointed out, the Democratic Party is uh, building on that as a foundation. Joining us now, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, uh, Fox National Security Strategist, former strategist to President Trump. Great to have you with us and author of the new book, Why We Fight, Recovering America's Will to Win. Also with us, former federal prosecutor, Sidney Powell. And it is great to have you with us, Sidney. Uh, Sid, let's start Thank with you. you. This idea of a voter ID, as the president said, it's the, I, I mean, the, obviously the folks in the rally in Tampa loved it. Uh, 
why it's such common sense that you would have to have identification, a real identification to vote, but not in not in America, 2018. Cindy. I think it's crucial that we ensure that we don't have voter fraud. That's got to be shut down. I mean, we worry about foreigners influencing our election, and here we want to let foreigners who are legally in the country do it? That's, it makes no sense whatsoever. So, and, yes, a national voter ID and national identification is appropriate. And the president talking, well, actually, Ron DeSantis, uh, the leading candidate uh, uh, for the uh, Republican gubernatorial uh, nomination, uh, said that's he's saying you know e-verify and good schools and we're off to a better uh, a better condition in the state of Florida and America. Everywhere, uh, Lou. This is this is the uh, the dirty little secret for the last 20, 25 years in American politics. Everybody knows why the Democrats uh, are pro-illegal immigration. This has nothing to do with humanitarian desires to assist people. If, if, if it had anything to do with that, they would have accepted the president's DACA offer three months ago. No, this is, this is about the fact they don't have a platform. Socialism as a concept means you're just going to run out of somebody else is money sooner or later, as the great Maggie Thatcher said. So they have to stuff the ballot boxes. And how do they do that? They do that with not having you need to show identification and by making illegal immigrants their new base. So, you know, the president is absolutely right. He, remember when he pulled us out of the Paris Climate Accord, he said, I was elected to be the president of the citizens of Pittsburgh. Well, yes, not the citizens of Mexico or El Salvador. Well, that would be a shock to the Koch brothers. And next Next, we're going to take up why Republicans are pushing for open borders, uh, some of them, and why they're pushing for more illegal immigrants to cross those open borders. That's next. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Sid and Dr. Gorka. Stay with us. We're back with Dr. Sebastian Gorka and former federal prosecutor Sidney Powell's Said, so let me ask you uh, right now, where do you think uh, Robert Mueller is going? Is this, we keep hearing there's, it's a propitious time to wrap it up, that there is a report that could happen, and others saying that he will continue this jihad uh, that he's on uh, in perpetuity for political purposes. That is, namely, to unseat a president. Your thoughts? I'm afraid the second uh, group is right. I don't see it ending anytime soon. I think he is the insurance policy that Peter Stroke talked about, or at least a very important part of it. I think the reason that the FBI and DOJ hid the 675,000 emails on Hillary Clinton's um, Mr. Weiner's laptop is because it's incriminating of any number of high-level people in the administration. It could even include Robert Mueller, since he was FBI director at the time she was Secretary of State and involved in the Uranium One business. Right. So I think they're hiding a lot of things, and he is a big part of that. He will drag it out as long as he possibly can. And your thoughts, Dr. Gork? I think Robert Mueller is a man obsessed. He reminds me of the founder of the former KGB, Levante Beria, who said, show me the man and I will find you the crime. That's not how it works in America, but it's clear that he's desperate. The charges against Matt Manafort tell you everything you need to know. Manafort may have committed crimes, but they were 12 years ago when he worked for the Ukraine. Utterly irrelevant to the 2016 Trump campaign. Yeah, it, 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 it's stunning. Uh, Let's turn now uh, to a couple of things. North Korea, we find out, uh, according to the latest uh, imaging, uh, that satellite imaging, that uh, North Korea appears to be advancing its missile program uh, uh, very quickly. Dr. Gorka, your thoughts on uh, whether this is a setback or anticipated uh, in what will be a long process, as Secretary Pompeo has put it? I think after three generations of dictatorship, you can't just flick a switch and change the way that regime behaves. But I think the fact that the rocket engine site is dismantling and they cancel their anti-American parade are good signals. But it will take time, Lou. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Sidney Powell, great to have you both with us. Thanks so much, Sid. Thank you, Sid. 
That's it for us tonight. Thank you for being with us. Good night from New York. See you tomorrow.